Hi everyone, my name is Wayne Pollock. I am an attorney who helps other attorneys engage the audiences that are vital to the firm's success, including their clients, their referral sources, their employees, and the media. In this video, the ethics of attorneys using outside ghostwriters to help with their law firm's marketing content. There are a number of good reasons why busy attorneys turn to ghostwriters to help them with their firm's marketing content. One, as I just alluded to, attorneys are busy and very rarely are creating the content they should be in order to help with their marketing efforts. Two, every minute that an attorney spends focused on a legal marketing issue is a moment taken away from their billable time and their uh, billable presence on client matters. And third, oftentimes writers, ju uh, attorneys just aren't as strong writers when it comes to the marketing content as they might be with their pure legal content. So outside ghostwriters are helpful and you see uh, more and more attorneys turning to outside ghostwriters, although to the outside world, you can't tell if a ghostwriter is being used versus an attorney writing their own content. But like everything else that an attorney does, we need to make sure that we are ethical in using the ghostwriters. And there are really two schools of thought, as you can imagine. One is ethically bad. On the other hand, ethically no problem. It is, of course, a nuanced, bit more nuanced of a discussion. And in this video, I want to break this discussion down a little bit more granularly. Uh, but of course, I am not giving you legal advice here. I'm just giving you general information about my views on the ethical issues related to ghostwriting. So the first thing we have to do is actually think about where we're practicing and what our jurisdiction says about blog posts. The conventional argument is that if an attorney is using a ghostwriter to uh, create their law firm marketing content and the attorney signs the blog or the client alert as their own name without hinting at this outside help, it runs afoul of Rule 7.1 of the ABA model rules in whatever local jurisdiction you're in regarding attorneys not being able to make false or misleading statements about themselves or their services. Of course, the idea is it's misleading to say that I wrote this blog if someone else actually wrote the blog. But in certain jurisdictions, blog writing is not considered advertising. For example, in California, and I'll, I'll put this link in the, I'll put a link to this decision in the description here. There is a decision from 2016, I believe, that says that when an attorney has a blog that is not part of their normal firm's website and does not talk about the attorney's availability for uh, professional uh, hiring and doesn't basically have a call to action about hiring me or calling me for a free consultation, then that blog post might not be considered advertising and thus does not come under Rule of Professional Conduct 7.1. So first things first, figure out what your jurisdiction says about blogging and advertising. In some instances, your jurisdiction might agree with California and not view blogs and other similar law firm marketing content as uh, the same kind of advertisements that are a billboard or a digital ad. Okay, so let's assume that the jurisdiction actually says that your blog posts are considered advertising. Well, there are really two kinds of ghostwriters. One kind of ghostwriter is the kind that an attorney outsources the, the uh, conceptualization and the creation to. So basically you hire this law firm, um, th this legal marketing content service, and they create a blog post on dog bite laws in your state or what to do if you're in a car accident and they go publish that directly to your website. You are basically buying a pre-written or pre-written blog post or other type of content. That obviously could be an issue ethically if that blog post is being uploaded to your site or it's going out as an email newsletter with a suggestion that you as the attorney or one of your colleagues actually wrote that blog post or other content. You see some attorneys get around this and some firms get around this when they have these kinds of blog posts written for them, they will say instead of the attorney's name, they'll say on behalf of the law firm. That is a way to get around the ethical issue here created by this wholly outsourced content creation process. But the second type of ghostwriting that exists that I think is the more powerful and more effective, this tends to be for larger law firms, uh, more upscale law firms and boutique law firms where the attorneys are writing a bylined article for a legal trade publication or industry trade publication or maybe a more in-depth blog post about a recent court decision or administrative agency action. And in that instance, 
you have an attorney working with the outside ghostwriter. So the attorney and the ghostwriter talk about the actual topic, the attorney's perspective on that topic. Uh, maybe the attorney has a, a rough outline or some materials that the ghostwriter should review before finishing up. And then the attorney will obviously, or I shouldn't say obviously, the attorney then reviews the work product of the ghostwriter, makes any edits, signs off on it, and then that's what gets published. In that instance, I don't think you're going to see much of an ethical issue because the attorney who is being, who has the byline, has ultimate say in everything. The attorney has a vision for the article, they're providing insight and feedback as to the content of the article, and they have final sign off. It is akin to a legal brief or a motion where a partner says to an associate, hi, let's, I need some help, and here's what I think we should argue, here's how I see the facts being laid out, and the legal arguments in this order, please draft this and I'll review it, and let me know if you have any questions. It's very similar. So in that second kind of ghostwriting, the more collaborative approach, which I think is more effective, because it's more, uh, it's more homed in on what the attorney actually wants to convey, and it's not like the first kind of ghostwriting, more outsourced, complete package done off-premises by another party. In that instance, I don't see an ethical issue. It's not a false or misleading statement to have the attorney's name attached to that article or blog post because he or she was involved in the creation of the blog post. They just had someone really fill in the dots and, and write out the content that was uh, beginning to form in the attorney's head. I might be biased because I offer ghostwriting services to attorneys, but I do not see an ethical issue when attorneys collaborate with outside ghostwriters to create marketing content that gets published under those attorneys' names. Again, I'm not giving you ethical advice. I'm not giving you legal advice here. I, of course, would urge you to consult with your local jurisdiction's ethical rules and any ethics opinions by your jurisdiction and uh, related bar associations, but I don't see an ethical issue, and I would encourage you to not get chipped up on ethical concern when it comes to ghostwriting. Make sure that you actually have a reason to hire a ghostwriter and that you can trust that the ghostwriter has enough knowledge about the law and is a talented enough writer that they can create the kind of content that you would be happy to put your name to when you publish it externally.